Hello and welcome to this short video for Christmas 2020. There are plenty of things happening across the team over the next few days, but I appreciate that not everyone will be able to get to church. So here is a collection of readings and carols with a short message, which I hope you'll find uplifting and encouraging. There won't be a video next week or the week after, but they will resume after that. And in the meantime, if you're wanting something to watch on a Sunday, all the previous ones are on this channel. Have a hunt for one you haven't seen before. It might be a little bit out of season, but better than nothing. Or you could go to one of the cathedral websites and see what they have to offer. 
Let's begin with prayer. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that, as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So now we're going to hear the story of the birth of Jesus as told by Luke and by John, interspersed with the gorgeous, if chilling, medieval hymn we call the Coventry Carol, and the old favourite, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
The Shepherds and the Angels In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. There an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the child was lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Thank you.
John chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. How can this be, since I am a virgin? Mary asks the angel. It's not an unreasonable question, even when you are faced with a messenger from the Almighty. Even in first century rural Palestine, they knew how babies are made. And although Mary was betrothed to Joseph, an arrangement which in those days was made between the two families concerned, they were still living separately. The wedding was still in the future, and as the Bible puts it delicately, they hadn't come together. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God, says the angel. And then after reminding her that her cousin Elizabeth, who was said to be past the age of childbearing, was about to give birth, the angel added, for nothing is impossible with God. What are we going to do with this story? We like to think we are very wise in matters like this. We know the facts of life. We even know, because we did it in biology lessons at school, how babies are made from the combination of the sperm and the egg and how that begins a process of cell division and development that eventually results in a child being born. And we're not so inclined as our forebears were to take the Bible at its word. We've been taught to question what we read, to be aware that people tell stories to make a point rather than to relate what really happened. We like to think that we're so much wiser than the people who used to just take all this stuff at face value. And you have all, and you have all I am sure, read all the debunking of the Christmas story. How Jesus wasn't really born in 0 AD. It almost certainly wasn't the 25th of December. He probably wasn't born in a stable. There's no reason to think that there were three wise men. That's only assumed because there were three gifts and so on. So you, can be, so you can end up coming to a service and wondering what exactly it is that you're looking for. Can we really believe this? What are we supposed to believe? Is it just a fairy tale? Or was the Son of God really born in Bethlehem to be the saviour of the world? Is it good news? Or is it a fantasy? Well, I think you know what I'm going to say. I'll just bring you back to what the angel said to Mary. Nothing is impossible for God. You might reject the Christmas story for any number of reasons, but I don't think it makes sense to reject it on the grounds that it's impossible. You have to ask whose rules are being broken here. It may be impossible for us, although the conception of children using only the mother's DNA seems a distinct possibility for modern science, Impossible for us, maybe, but impossible for God? What are we saying about God if we say that? 
If you're one of those who draws a line at believing in the virgin birth, then I'll let you off. And there are plenty of faithful Christians who do. But whether you do or not, I would ask you to take on board what the angel said to Mary. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power from on high will overshadow you. Nothing is impossible with God. The Bible opens with the story of creation. The earth was formless and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. And into this brooding darkness, God speaks. Let there be light. And there was light. The same Spirit that brought the universe out of nothing was to come upon Mary and she was to conceive a son. This is a new beginning, a new let it be, a new creative initiative to bring something out of nothing. Medieval writers may have wanted to use it to say something negative about sex and stress, that Mary was a pure virgin when Jesus was born, but I don't think that's there in the Gospel. The emphasis is on this being God's work. The fact that it's impossible shows that because, um, shows that because only God Almighty can do the impossible. Just as Elizabeth and other characters in the Bible who were too old to have children suddenly found their lifelong dreams coming true, so this young woman, with no husband, was to be the mother of God's son. Sure, it's impossible, but that's what God does, the impossible. I don't know about you, but I find all those Christmas movies quite hard to watch. They tend to be a bit sugary for my taste, but I have noticed that there is a common theme that runs through most of them. The struggle between belief and disbelief. There's the wise child who believes and the disbelieving adult, and in the end the child is proved right. It's a story we relate to because it happens in all of us. There's a battle between the child who believes and the adult that doubts. And the Christmas story dares us to believe in the God who makes impossible things happen. And we have to decide if we're going to listen to it or not. How can this be, is the question. The power from on high shall come upon you, is the answer. It's not so much an explanation as an invitation to trust in the God who made the universe out of nothing, in the God who does the impossible. When I started writing this, I thought I was going to end it by saying that we all need to bring our impossible situations to God, believing that all things are possible for him. And that would be a good sermon, maybe another sermon, but I realise that this isn't quite what the story tells us. Jesus didn't ask to be the mother of Jesus. It wasn't something she aspired to. Unlike other women in the Bible who are touched by God, she hasn't been longing for a child for many years. She had thought her life was set out for her. She was to be Joseph's wife, she would manage his house and bear his children. And then this happens, unbidden, unwanted. So I think what I would like to say to you to take away with you is a sense of God's possibility for your future. Maybe in one way or another, the future is set for you. You're getting older, the range of possibilities is narrowing down, Yet here at Christmas, year after year, is a call back to believe because all things are possible with God. The Holy Spirit can come upon you. The power from the on high can overshadow you. You can discover God's purpose and direction for your life because all things are possible when God is involved. When you think about that later on today or tomorrow, and I appreciate there are plenty of things going on at the moment which will crowd this out of your mind, when you have a chance to think about it, there will be a familiar battle between wanting to believe and disbelieving, between hope and doubt. And I just want to say, choose to believe. Take Mary's words and make them yours. Say to God, let it be for me, as you have said. Because at the heart of the Christmas message is this simple act of faith, that in spite of all the impossibilities that surround us, Nothing is impossible with God. So let us pray. 
We ask for the courage to believe in God's possibilities for us and for this world. Almighty God, you have given us your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Father who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world shed that love upon you, his children. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. May the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God-bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. I'm going to leave you now with a final carol. But before, we, before I go, I'd just like to wish you all a very happy Christmas. God bless you.